to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south. Today we give you a nugget of His Glory. We are going to take a look at the prophet Isaiah and, and look for an example how we should walk our wa a walk in the Most High God, with the Most High God, what the uh, servant attitude that the prophet Isaiah is showing here in Isaiah 6. He was able to go up to the third heaven, and uh, we don't know how he went up there. He was transported, but he was able to see the throne of God. He saw the seraphim. We'll, we'll walk through that. But his servant attitude is what sets him apart. And that's what the Lord is looking for us to do. Are we a servant for his purpose, for his glory? Or are we in the ministry for vanity? Are we in it for money? Are we in it for prestige? Are we in it for uh, a title? Uh, one of the biggest obstacles I, I heard when I went to Africa was so many ministries were taking on uh, roles and calling themselves apostles and prophets and they can do this miracle and they do that miracle and was shining all the glory to that particular person or that particular ministry. And that's not what it's all about. It's about shining the glory to the one and only, and that is His glory. And uh, we're going to see by, by the example what the prophet Isaiah, you know, pro Isaiah will go down as one of the greatest prophets of all time. And it's not because of his position of authority. It's his position of love and trust in the Most High God and saying, I'll do it, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it, as we're going to see here in Isaiah 6. We'll walk through the words because they're so beautiful. He realizes that he's unclean. He realizes that he needs to be clean, and the, clean, the, the cleanliness can only come from God through today, through the Son, Jesus Christ. But then he, he realized that he was, he was unworthy. But he put his hand up and said, yes, I will do it, Lord. So we take it up, and he sees the, 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 the throne, the Lord, Jehovah, sitting on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Two types of uh, holy angels, uh, you have the cherub and you have the serab, seraphim. Uh, one has six, the seraphim has the six, and the cherubim have four. So there are different r responsibilities for the angels. We'll get into an angel study at some point because the angels of God are th their messenger. He uses them for every single thing that he wants to be uh, have done in the heavenlies. And as Paul said... Be careful uh, who, who you entertain because you may be entertaining angels and they're always, always, always around us. I know here at His Glory uh, uh, Ministry, uh, we, we call this, God calls this, uh, um, uh, Beth Kavod, the house of His glory. And in this house, we see angels. We've, uh, I have never seen the visible of, a, of the angel, but I see them going past and, and like a, a, something going back, going past real fast. And I have this sense of peace and the Lord telling me that they are angels. But we've had three people uh, in our household and uh, people of the ministry that have seen the angel here uh, in its great glory. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing is what they have said. And uh, I'm praying that I may see that angel in that glory as well. So they're around us. They're protecting us. That's what God is using them for, to intercede and help us. Uh, we're not supposed to worship them. They are servants, just like we are servants, as we were talking in our a study uh, yesterday, that uh, where Jesus was made lower than the angels when he became the servant and the lamb of God because he had to humble himself to the lowest of low and then rose up, even though he is the creator of the angels, and rose up on the third day to be uh, the, uh, sit at the right hand of the Most High God and have authority of all things. So he says that the, they had six wings, two covered the face, two covered the feet, two uh, when it flew. One cried to another. Listen to what they cried. And this is amazing. And there's no coincidence. Again, coincidence is not a kosher word. We're, re we're reading this from the ancient Hebrew, the original Hebrew scrolls. Again, these same scrolls are found in the in the in the, in the, um, the in Israel today. They were carbon dated back to 450 BC. So the word of Isaiah is true. And one cried, "Holy, holy is Jehovah of hosts." Jehovah again, the, the 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 name of the Lord in Judaism, the unpronounceable name of Yahweh. And uh, Jehovah, that Dr. Barnesdale tells us in his commentary on the book of Revelation, is actually three-part in the name of Jehovah, meaning the three-part of the Trinity. And also we know that the word Elohim, where we see in the Hebrew, means grammatically only can be three. So he's saying, holy, holy, holy is Jehovah host. That's the military might of the king, military might of God Almighty. So he's seeing all this in front of him. Can you imagine seeing the throne of God? And, and, and seeing, uh, seeing his robe, 
and, and seeing these seraphim and, and seeing them sing in such a beautiful voice and, and holy, holy, holy uh, is the, the Jehovah of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Uh, we have this on our website, www.hisglory.me, because that's what it's all about. Given glory to the Most High. And if we read it in the Hebrew, the whole, the whole earth is full of his kavod. Kavod in the Hebrew literally means the essence of his glory, meaning who he is, his glory. That's why the Lord Most High named this ministry after his glory. It's all for him. And there's no coincidence, again, coincidence is not a kosher word in the Hebrew, that he says, holy, 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 three times. Why three times? To represent three, the, the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the post and the door was shaken by the voice who carried it out, and the house was filled with smoke. We see that all the time with the, smoke, the pillar of smoke with Moses. And the, the, the Shekinah glory when Solomon dedicated the, 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 the temple. It was so much the priest couldn't even go in. His glory is so amazing, and it fills you with just this peace, joy, love, hope. So Isaiah was seeing just amazing things. And he, 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 has the, he has the ability here to give up self for the glory of God and say, I'm unclean. And he says, woe is me, for I'm undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. I'm in the place where they're, they're going against you, Lord. They're, they're getting their own idols. For the eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, the Jehovah of hosts. The eyes have seen the King. So this is uh, my strong conjecture that he's referring to a thenopony. A thenopony is a, uh, a, a term in theology that says that it's an Old Testament appearance of Jesus Christ because no man or no one has seen the face of the Father. And, G and Paul tells us that Jesus Christ is the visible of the invisible God. So he's seeing the King of Kings, the Lord of hosts, the Messiah, the, the, the Malik, or the Messiah, the, the, the King, in the Hebrew, for my eyes have seen the king, the Jehovah of hosts, the one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hands like coal, while he taken the tongs from the altar and touched my mouth with it. Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away. So he's saying it to the king, the king, Jesus Christ, the only one that can take salvation away. I, Isaiah is saying, I am unclean. And he is going to give them a way to become clean in the eyes of the Lord. Your sins will be as scarlet, they'll be washed as white as snow, is what the prophet Isaiah was given from the Lord, because he's seen it firsthand. And the iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged, because he humbled and repented. And I heard the voice of Jehovah saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. So he says, who should I send to go out and be a prophet for me? Who is going to go out and represent me to this unclean, backsliding nation of Israel and the world? Who is going to do it? Because it's not going to be a pretty job. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to d despise you. They're going to kill you. We know in ancient Hebrew tradition that Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, it's alluded to in the book of Hebrews, that he took a wooden saw and sawed Isaiah in half and killed Isaiah. That's how Isaiah met his death. We see Isaiah had to go with a loincloth and nothing covering his body for three years to get the attention of the people. They did not want to hear truth. That's the way it is today. To speak the truth of God today, people don't want to hear the truth of the gospel. They don't want, they want another gospel. They want a sugar, sugar, sugary gospel that's tasty and tastes good. They're all the t things that they want. they want. They want cake and ice cream and, 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 and soda with their, with, with, their, with, with their church. And the Lord wants to give us the truth. And sometimes that truth is going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to take, but we have to take it because it is his word and his truth. And we need to see exactly the way Isaiah did it. Isaiah said, I don't care what you tell me to do, Lord. I'm going to do it. And he is going to do it. And he said, here I am, send me. And he did. And, he's, and then God here again says, Jehovah, keep on hearing, but they don't understand. Keep on seeing, but they don't perceive. The, the, make the heart of the people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. He's saying the eyes won't save them. The, the, the ears won't save them because they're a stubborn, hard-nosed people that are into their idols and doing it for their way. 
You're going to come up against uh, uh, hardliners. You're going to come up against rejection, Isaiah. It's not going to be a popular role that you're going to do. But I have a great reward for you because I know you love me and you trust me because you volunteered to say, I will do it. Here I am. Send me, Lord. And you've seen my glory. You see where your home is going to be. But there will be a remnant, as he says, and understand with their heart. He said, he didn't say understand with their mind. He said, understand with their heart and we return and they'll be healed. Healed from what? Healed from their sin to enter into the kingdom glory with God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So the message today is let's be like Isaiah. Isaiah got to the, see the glory of God before he really got involved in his, in his ministry. And he said, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. And the king, the Meliach, or the Mashiach, uh, the Messiah, the king, uh, gave him salvation, purged his iniquity, and he says, I will do it, whatever you want me to do, without even knowing what it was coming, and it was not going to be a good, a, a, a tough fight. So we don't call ourselves apostles. We don't call ourselves prophets. I'm sure if Isaiah was sitting here with me today on hisglory.tv, he'd say, I'm just, I'm just a man. I'm just a servant. And that's what we're supposed to do. No titles, no bringing glory to ourselves, because the angels are singing to the Lord as we speak, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth is full of His glory, not for our glory. We pray that this has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Isaiah bless you today and always. God bless you.